Today's video, we're going to be getting gameplay in for you. Uh, I'm in my Super Bowl, and we're going to be rocking some 3-4 odds, some dollar on uh, defense. If you guys want to get my e full ebooks on these offensive or defensive uh, ebooks, those are available by joining the Patreon. Link to sign up for that is in the description. On offense, we are still in Bunch Strong. Like I said, I've talked a little bit about this before. Uh, I just think Bunch Strong is the most um, effective standalone, what I would call standalone formation. Like you could literally just stay in that formation all game. And uh, that's why I like it. Now, uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, just practicing in general, how to get better at Madden in this video. Uh, I've been working on some stuff for you guys and got some really cool concepts that I want to share with you just in terms of some research I've been doing about intentional practice. We've talked about intentional play calling and now I uh, wanted to do a video kind of just talking and touching on intentional practice. So uh, one of the things that I, I heard from one of my favorite coaches uh, of all time Mike Leach was he he basically said um, the most important thing he was talking about his teams in Washington State he said the most important thing that we do is practice the most important thing that he thinks that anybody does is practice and so really the thing that he becomes very interested in and fascinated by is how practice occurs how do you practice how do you practice for uh, for the game and really this can apply to any skill not just in Madden this can apply to learning an instrument this can apply to uh, learning any any kind of skill right any kind of skill so again the the major thing here is how do you practice uh, that is really really critical just in determining determining your ability to develop and skill so um, research has basically shown that short practice sessions, and when I say short, it can kind of vary a little bit, but in general, I would say from all the research that I've looked at, and, and I've, I've talked about this book a little bit before, and I'm going to talk about it a lot this summer. I'm still working through it, uh, but the book is The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, and in that book, and there's another one that's kind of similar to it. Um, it's called the, the uh, I think the book is called Peak. It's by Andres Erickson, and Erickson's actually quoted in the book The Talent Code, both of those books basically are trying to answer the question, what makes Michael Jordan Michael Jordan? What makes Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant? What makes LeBron James LeBron James? The best people, um, the best the best athletes in the world, the best musicians in the world, the best um, business people in the world, they all follow kind of a similar blueprint. And one of those blueprints is the ability to deliberately, intentionally practice, okay? Now, I'm going to use kind of a strength training analogy for you uh, because I think it does make the most sense. So there's a, a lot of different ways to train. There's a lot of different ways to work out. But there are really only a couple of super, super effective methods for specific results. I've talked about it before, but I've been doing strength training now for the last... Uh, almost seven months, and I've got a 435-pound deadlift. I've got a 365-pound squat. These are all for five repetitions. And then I've got a 250-pound bench press, or 250, maybe 255, but I think 250. And then um, overhead press is 185, right? Okay, so those are pretty decent numbers uh, just in terms of generally, general strength. But how did I achieve those results? And again, we're still hopefully going up. Um, but how did I achieve those results? Well, it wasn't through going into the gym. Okay, this is really important. It wasn't through going into the gym and lifting a light weight a lot, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes you go into the gym and you'll see, number one, a lot of machines. Um, so maybe people do like a bunch of, you know, lat pull downs or leg presses or whatever. Not saying those don't help, but I'm saying th that's not the main, the main ingredient for increasing your strength, okay? The main ingredient that I use to increase the strength was I went into the gym pretty much three days a week for several months in a row and essentially added five pounds. I started with the empty bar and I added five pounds every single time I went into the gym. And over time, you continue to do that until you really can't do that anymore. And then you add five pounds maybe a week, but you, you have to continue to add weight to the bar to get stronger. You cannot get stronger if you don't add weight to the bar. The same concept applies to Madden. There are people that will play Madden and they will basically never, I have been guilty of this. This is why I'm so fascinated by this right now, where basically you play Madden, but you're not really playing. You're kind of playing, um, for lack of a better word, like like you're kind of playing, as that was a bad read, uh, I had circle wide open. You're kind of playing on autopilot. You're kind of playing on autopilot. And you, you're really not looking at anything. You're not really doing anything to get intentionally better. You're not straining yourself to play. You're not really working on anything. You're, you're kind of just 
like playing the game, but you're not really like, I, like I said, intentionally playing the game. Okay. The same concept from strength training applies to improving in Madden. And what I mean by that is in order for you to really uh, systematically improve and research shows this all of improvement comes at the edge of failure. All improvement comes at the edge of failure. Daniel Coyle would call this reaching. Um, Anders Ericsson would call this stretching or straining. And basically the, the main point of that is you have to intentionally on purpose stretch yourself in, in, in order to get stronger. Now an example of how you can do that in Madden, especially in head to head seasons where we really, you know, you don't get a lot of like really, really good rep games. I don't necessarily think the quality of your opponent determines the quality of your work or the quality of your practice. Now, it certainly doesn't, I wouldn't say it doesn't hurt to play better players, like playing tournaments, playing high stakes games, playing players on tournaments, all of those things. But for me, um, I pretty much can't play Madden during a lot of these tournaments. Um, I have a family, have a son on the way. Um, and so I, I can't, um, you know, I, I have to be kind of available to my family uh, in the evening time. So because of that, I have to figure out, okay, well, how do I practice in head to head seasons where we're running pistol, whatever this guy's running, right? Well, the way that I do this and the way that I'm going to continue to do this is by doing essentially slowing the game down and it's trying to, and we'll talk about it in the next video this guy's going to go ahead and quit out. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So I uh, want to continue to talk about how you practice. And as I was as I was kind of loading up into this thing, I was thinking, well, there's another concept that you can really um, you kind of think about from a football perspective. So again, uh, if you think about it, it, the the way you improve in Madden, uh, there's really a couple different methods, and there's really a couple different components. One of the improvements is you need to understand like knowledge. So how do you achieve knowledge, or how do you acquire knowledge? Well, the way that you, in Madden, we talk about there's a knowledge gap, right? In general, there's a knowledge gap. Like from what this guy knows to what I know, there's a little bit of a knowledge gap, okay? So how do you acquire knowledge? There's really two methods. Number one, you can buy eBooks. This is the whole purpose of our Patreon. We give you access to knowledge in our Patreon. You can subscribe to that for just $10 and it literally gets you, it literally gives you all of the knowledge that you need to win at any level of Madden. So you can you can sign up for ten bucks if you want to. Links in the description, right? We have all of our ebooks there. We we literally teach everything that you need to know to be the best in the world. Okay. Now, the other thing though, and, and this is really the more I think critical thing to train is what I would call like skill gap. Okay. So I want to try to like define these two terms in in a specific way that would hopefully help under explain this and then what we're going to do is we'll talk about how to actually acquire both of those so again how do you acquire a knowledge gap there's really two methods number one you can you can uh, buy ebooks which i would recommend uh and then the second real the second way to um acquire knowledge is through film study you can watch what the best players in the world do try to understand why they do that and try to understand um, basically how you could implement that into either your own offense that you're running your own game or just flat out run their offense or defense. Okay. So those are very uh, simple ways in which you can acquire knowledge. So two methods, number one, like courses or eBooks, number two, film study. Okay. Now let's take this to the real NFL. How do players acquire knowledge? Well, they have coaches that give them schemes that are paid professionals that give them the schemes that the coach's entire job basically is to develop the skill of a player, but also to put them in the best position to utilize that skill with their knowledge and their schematics. Okay. That is super, super, super important. So, and then the other way that players in the NFL achieve a knowledge advantage, and this is what we see in like players like Peyton Manning, players like Tom Brady, Mahomes, all those guys, very similar they all have a significant amount of time invested into film study. They all study um, a significant amount of film. So those are the two methods in the NFL, kind of similar to Madden, okay, uh, for lack of better, uh, for lack of uh, oversimplification. So that is how you acquire knowledge. Now you have to have knowledge, but at the highest level of Madden, you can pretty much guarantee that the player that you're playing, if they are good at the game, they're going to have the knowledge that you have. They're going to know what you know. And this is where Madden, I think, 
So the, in, if you have a knowledge gap, that's where Madden becomes checkers. You just know more than the other person, right? But if you, if you guys both have equal knowledge gap, then it becomes a skill-based game. And the primary skills in Madden, in my opinion, just after all the research that I've done on this game and I, all of the playing I've done on this game for a really long time, you basically want to have two key elements to your knowledge. The first thing is you want to have, or I'm sorry, to your skill. So in order to achieve skill gap in Madden, you basically want to, on offense, you want to master your reads. So your ability to read the defense and make the right decision with the football consistently, that is the most important thing you can do offensively, in my opinion, to increase your skill. Now, of course, there's supplemental things such as blue passing this year, um, being able to use their catch from previous years, not as much so this year. You know, those are all elements, but really the primary feature, the main thing you've got to be able to do um, if you want to increase your skill in Madden is on the offensive side balls, you need to be able to read the defense post snap. You need to have someone who is running the defense and the defense looks exactly identical. Every single play, you need to be able to consistently be able to make the right decision with your reads. That is super important. Okay. And I'm going to talk about how to do that in just a second. Now this, the defensive skill is very similar um, so the defensive skill that I would say you need to be able to master is first there's the knowledge component of defense, which is understanding basically like, like the knowledge, the knowledge thing of, of offense is understanding good route combos, good pass protection, what runs do, what runs work against one front stuff like that. Right. But the uh, knowledge component on defense is understanding a like blitzes, how to get pressure at your opponent. Um, another thing about, about it would be like how to, uh, put good adjustments on the field. Okay. Good adjustments on the field. So, uh, coverage adjustments and ba basically coverage adjustments and pressures. Those are the two main things that you need to know how to do in order to be successful on the defensive side of the ball. Okay. Now, once you, once you have that knowledge, it becomes skill gap, right? So what is the primary skill gap on the defensive side of the ball? Well, number one, I would say it's anticipating, um, like anticipating, it's kind of a little bit of a deeper skill, but it's just like anticipating what they're going to, what they're going to do offensively and countering that at the right time. Um, that one's a little bit more like, you know, it, it, I would say it's harder to master, but really the main skill on defense, if you really boil it down to the, the main stuff and what really matters, the main skill on defense is understanding how to use her, how to use her well. That's the main thing. So, uh, so basically, let's kind of come back and boil it down. So on the offensive side of the ball, what is the skill that you need to master? You need to master basically post-snap reads. You need to be able to make good decisions with the football. Um, and then really kind of similar to defense, like I would say a secondary skill that's kind of important would just be like understanding like when to call what. Um, but again, that's a little bit more knowledge, but kind of just anticipating like what's the coverage he's probably going to call and how can I structure a play that's going to be able to attack that with a route combo? That's 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 a deeper skill, and really, it's not even that. I wouldn't say it's that big of a priority um, because if you put good route combos on the field and you make the right read, there's almost always going to be somebody open if you put a good route combo on the field. So the main skill on offense is reading the defense, reading the defense, making the right decisions consistently. That is the main thing. Now, what's the right skill, or uh, what's the main skill on on defense? Right. Well, the main skill on defense is making the right decision with your user, using the routes that you need to use her and uh, understanding that. So it's basically making post-snap reads based off of the route stems they put on the field and the, combined with the coverage adjustments that you put on the field to be able to make the right decision. That is, that is at the core of what makes a great defensive player, okay? Obviously, there's other things. Most of them are knowledge, right? But at the top level, really it comes down to user skill. It comes down to making the right reads with the user, having a disciplined user. Those are the those are the important things, okay? Okay, so we've talked a lot about that. Now I want to relate that back to the NFL and explain how this applies to the NFL. So if you think about an NFL's uh, skill set, what is the main skill set on the offensive side of the ball for the quarterback? Really, it's read and react, right? Obviously, you got to be able to throw the ball on time. You got to be able to throw the ball accurately. But at the main level, the main skill that has to be developed over time um, is reading the defense and making the right throw, making the right play every play, right? 
Defensively, what's the main skill? I'd say the main skill on defense is either tackling or coverage leverage. There's a lot of different little skills that kind of add up to the bigger hole in terms of defense. I would say in general, it's it's tackling. So how do you cultivate those two skills? How do you cultivate those two skills? Um, in an NFL environment, you're playing one game a week. This is really important. You are playing one game a week, right? And you're practicing three to four, I, I think three, three to four days a week. And then if you think about their off season, they basically have training camp. They have a whole off season in which, again, by and large, they're basically working out or they're practicing. They're not um, playing rep games like we do it, like we would have Madden. So th this kind of begs the important question uh, to me is how do NFL players get better when they are not constantly playing the best competition? Well, they do it through two primary things. The first is knowledge development. Again, film study, super important. Um, they watch themselves. They watch their opponents. They watch their opponent's opponents. They watch a lot of film. This kind of solves the knowledge gap. So how do you increase your knowledge in Madden? You watch a lot of film and you get eBooks. My opinion, that's what I would do, okay? We, we're, that's why we're doing a lot of film rooms on the channel right now. You watch a lot of film and you get eBooks where they actually say, here is what I'm doing and here's why. It just, it just kind of uh, shrinks, you know, it just helps understand it faster, right? From there, um, from there, it comes down to, and Mike Leach would talk about this as well, they try to spend a significant amount of time in their practices when he was coaching. They would try to basically spend a significant amount of time in their practices, probably the most significant amount of time in their practice, repping the play, repping the play, getting repetitions, running the play. And this, this repetition was not done against the highest level of defensive player. Okay. It was done against their practice squad. It was done against their, you know, maybe their starting defense. And we all, we all know Washington state didn't have the best defense in the world. So how were they able to create record setting offenses without having, without playing the best competition every single day? It came down to, they understood the, the actual application and the actual um, the actual application of incremental skill development and incremental skill development comes from not just repetition but repeating the play perfectly every single time. In fact, Mike Leach was famous for these uh, basically these starter drills that they would do, where they went about half speed and they just slowly repped the plays that they were going to run. This is how you can apply this to your own game. This is how you can apply this in Madden. When you're playing somebody, like, for example, this, where it's just a completely different, like, he's playing a completely different game than I am, right? He just he doesn't understand some of the things that, that we know. He doesn't, he doesn't have a gunslinger or set feet lead on his quarterback. All of that stuff is, is, you know, he's just he's not a great Madden player yet, right? He's doing some stuff, but really, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of standard of, like, somebody that just doesn't know what they're doing. The reason I'm saying that, not to insult him, right? It's just to understand, okay, so I'm playing. I'm clearly the better player, okay? I'm clearly the more knowledgeable player. So how do I increase my skill when I'm playing somebody that I know more than? The way you do that is focus on going slow and going more intentionally and thoroughly, right? Going slow, going more intentionally and thoroughly. And when you make a mistake, because um, you can make a user mistake if you think about it, because, again, we're honing in on specific skills, for Madden, and in my, in my opinion, the, the specific skills you have to have, in my, it's just it's just across the board, you have to be able to user, you have to be able to user well, and then you also have to be able to, um, you have to be able to understand like post snap, like make the right decision with the ball. Okay, those are the main things you have to be able to do. So what I like to do is I will just basically run my defense and I will work on my user lurks. I will work on where, where am I supposed to be? How do I user that? How do I user that well, right? Because I know all of the different coverage adjustments that are possible throughout a game. But what I need to work on is how to user with intention, how to user with intentionality, understanding, like, look at the route stems and say, okay, based off the route stems, what's going to be open? And then on offense, it's basically kind of similar. Like, I'm trying to just master my reads. I'm trying to throw the ball perfectly every single time. Those are the main things that I'm trying to accomplish. And so, and the cool part about head-to-head, -head, in my opinion, is you get a lot of repetition. Again, obviously, he's not the best player in the world, 
but you get a lot of repetition against stuff that is kind of random. And, and I actually think that's, that's helpful because you can basically go through and say, okay, this is kind of the one of the most random. You, you, you kind of get a look against everything. You kind of get to look against everything. So again, obviously this is probably the worst head to head has ever been uh, just in terms of matchmaking and all that. But I do still think there is a way to in get value out of this mode. I have noticed that in the last couple of weeks, basically my, my practice routine is I will log on. I'll play a mutt head to head season. Like um, my goal is to try to play an entire season in about an hour or two hours, hopefully just depending on obviously who you're playing and all that. So that's kind of my main thing. And then as I'm playing that season, what I notice is every single game that I play, if I'm actually intentional in looking at my reads and working on my reads, I get better over the course of that hour. And by the time I'm in the Super Bowl, normally my reads are clicking really, really well. To me, that is, that is kind of a, a case study or a, to a degree of understanding deliberate practice. So if you want to get better at Madden, in my opinion, one of the best ways to do that is, you, number one, you need to acquire knowledge because Madden at the core, um, at least early on, we are, we are really, um, it's all about knowledge at the, at, at the core. Oh, I was trying to throw square. Um, so you have to have knowledge. It's probably 80% knowledge, right? That will get you within the top 80 percentile. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That will get you in the top 80% in the world. If you know more than your opponent, like if you just know the right things to do, and obviously you actually call the right plays, <laughs> um, which I've been guilty of for sure. If you if you know the right things to do and you call the right plays, you will win the majority of Mata games that you play online. Uh, that being said, the to take you to the top of the level, in my opinion, it has to be uh, uh, reads on offense and real defense, basically user reads on offense and user reads on defense, being able to use the right thing in the right way, being able to make the right post snap read and throw the ball on time to your opponent or to your receiver. And you can go slow and then you can go fast. I like to basically try to, again, just deliberately drill the, the reads in my head. Okay. I'm going to come out. I'm going to look right. I'm going to look middle. I'm going to look left. And just that basic exercise, um, because here, here's the thing, if you think about it, and this is the best way I could explain it, I think. In the NBA, um, I actually went to a Bucks game the other day, and I saw, and I actually tweeted about this, but I was watching the pregame warm-ups. Again, the NBA, you're going to play a lot more games in the NFL. So basically, they don't have... Um, they don't have a lot of practice time. If you actually think about the NBA season, how much time are they actually like practicing, right? They're really not. They're playing games again. They're playing a lot of games. So how do you, how does an NBA team really get better throughout the season? Um, and it really comes down to, if you really look at NBA basketball, I do think there's a lot of correlations to Madden, but in essence, in the NBA, you see all these players, come out probably about an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours before the game. And they have a pregame routine where they're basically shooting. They're not cut. They're not defended. There's no defender, right? They're just going through their basic re uh, their, their shots, the shots that they would probably shoot in the game. They're going to go through and they're going to work on those shots. And as they do that more and more and more, you can see the ability to increase the likelihood they're actually going to make those shots and they actually improve the more they rep, rep, rep that. Now, I think there is a limit at which you can intentionally rep um, because if there wasn't a limit to what you could intentionally rep, then people would literally be in, you know, the best players in the world would literally be shooting all the time. That's probably not what happens, right? We know that uh, professional athletes take a lot of naps. We know that professional athletes um, have a lot of media stuff that they have to do, media availabilities. They also do a lot of film study, right? So it's not just reps. It's it's intentional repetition, repetition with a purpose, game, uh, game-like shots, right? And then it's also knowledge acquisition, film study, um, recovery. Uh, there's some physical, like, you know, you want to make sure you're physically healthy, um, those are all elements that, in, that kind of build up to this, this deal. In Madden, you kind of take the physical element out of it a little bit. Um, I still think that there is, there's a physical element in almost anything, and you need to be, at least in my opinion, for your own mental health, 
Um, it's just studies have shown significant improvements in brain, uh, in your brain and all that fun stuff. Uh, when you are physically active, um, obviously that's a relative term, but, uh, if you think about it, I do think there, I think there's a physical side to Madden hundred percent. I think, um, I think the, there's a reason, I mean, Henry, from what I, what I've studied on Henry, who's, who's kind of our, I guess our case study, one of the best players, uh, well, in my opinion, the best player of all time. Okay. If you think about Henry, um, you know, he, I'm pretty sure he goes to the gym almost every single day. Okay. And there's a reason, there's a correlation there. There's, there's, there's a, there's a strategy behind that. Right. So, uh, I think they're, because again, studies show, and they've looked at musicians. This isn't just athletes. This is musicians. This is artists, all of them. You cannot maintain a super high level of focus and concentration. And I'm talking about uninterrupted, like we're actually being very intentional with what we're doing. You can't maintain that. Like if you ever try to do that, like I did a video a couple of videos ago where I literally like every time I made a bad read, I clipped it. This is what I would do, by the way, in intentional practice. I clipped it. Um, I looked at it. I, I was like, okay, why did I make, why did I mess up? What could I have done better? What could I have done differently? Right. Um, and then I literally had to, you know, I was doing this in a live game, you know, I was doing this in a, in a live game. So, and there was bad pocket. I had a lot of people open. It's like example. So like I would clip that and then I would literally make myself watch it and I would make myself explain why I messed up. So like here I had circle wide open. I missed him. I had R1 wide open. I missed him. Okay. So here, because we're in kind of a quick snap situation, so now I need to look out. Okay. That's not open but our one's open this time. I don't miss him. See what I'm saying? You, 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 when you force yourself to be more intentional, it will take a significant amount of energy, but it's the only real way, in my opinion, to actually improve because now you're actually um, creating brain circuitry, which will actually, which will, um, which will, man, I had our one, which will um, make it so that you're faster. You're more effective at it the next time you do it. So, that's 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 the main principles, uh, in my opinion, of getting better at Madden. That's the main principle of understanding, um, uh, just deliberate practice in general. You can literally apply this to anything. You have to isolate a skill. You have to like, for example, there's a reason when you're lifting weights that they use the squat, the bench, the deadlift, and the overhead press as a strength training mechanism. Okay. They use the squat and the bench press because they tr they isolate. They, they are full body movements, but one of them works really your lower body probably a little better, and the other one works your upper body a little better, okay? So when we take a look at like a Madden and, and take that concept and apply it to Madden, you're isolating specific skills that you're trying to improve on. And the mainstay skills that matter in Madden are your user and they are your post snap reads. Okay. Everything else really is knowledge, putting yourself in the best position to make those plays. And, and that is a significant thing in of itself. But once you get one, when you're playing someone like this, we want to focus on like, okay, how can we make sure that we're making the right read every single time? And my favorite way to do that is to literally, if I ever make a bad read to go ahead and um, essentially clip it and try to process mentally why I made that mistake. Um, Michael Jordan, I heard this, uh, well, I, I continue to come back to this. I think this is one of the most valuable quotes for, uh, development and it just continues to kind of show that. But basically, did you know, so Michael Jordan is famous because he, or one of the, one of the things that is, is like he's famous for is he has taken and made the most game winning shots in NBA history. Okay. He's taken and made the most uh, the, the most amount of game winning shots in NBA history, right? Okay. But he has also taken and missed <laughs> the most amount of game winning shots in history in NBA history. Nobody has missed more game winning shots than Michael Jordan. And at the same time, nobody has made more game winning shots than Michael Jordan. That's a crazy route combo right there. Um, and there's a lesson in that. It's not just fail, right? It's not just failure is okay the lesson that I've come to learn is failure is necessary for improvement. How did Michael Jordan get better at taking game winning shots? Well, he repped the skill, right? He had this, he has to have the skill of shooting. 
So he trained those shots over and over again in practice without anybody guarding him, without anybody guarding him, right? He slowed it down and he isolated the skill to its finest point. That's what we would say. I would say that's mud head to head, right? That, that's mud head to head. We're just, we're just working on, we're working on the basic mechanics of, you know, progression one, progression two, progression three. But then the other thing is, or uh, the other element is Michael Jordan failed. He failed over and over again. He missed shots over and over and over again in key situations. And out of that failure, instead of um, running from the failure, embracing the failure, because he could have just stopped taking those shots, right? He could have just, he could have just said, well, I don't want to take those shots anymore because, you know, I don't want to deal with whatever, right? But he forced himself to face the failure head on and essentially use failure to succeed. And that's, and you'll, you ever hear Michael Jordan, there's a great commercial that he basically, I think it was a Nike commercial, but I can't remember for sure, but you can look it up. It's like 30 seconds on YouTube, but Michael Jordan failure commercial. And he'll talk about it. He's like, I've, he'll tell you exactly the number of how many missed shots he's had in his career and basically say, I have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. When you fail and you work through the failure, you face the failure, you learn from the failure, you're almost always you're going to grow from the failure. And the same is true in Madden. That's why I say when I miss a read, when I make a mistake, you want to you want to look back and you want to ask yourself why because all of learning comes on the edge of failure. Thanks for watching the video. Hope this was helpful. If you want to get our full ebooks, they are available in the Patreon. Link is in the description.